with your back straight, close your eyes and let's do three arms together. Oh. 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 Agnana timiranda sya agnana anjana sharakaya chakshur Tasme Shri Gurave Namaha Nice to meet you all, welcome. We have a Facebook Live at the same time. So we are going online. Uh, they only see me, don't worry. So we don't have all the Zoom members on. <laughs> so you can relax. Uh, so yeah, there have been many requests to do um, a satsang which is a little bit more close and to talk about experiences, uh, personal experiences. So today as I wanted to continue uh, talking about what is to be a devotee and uh, what is literally devotion and also having a spiritual master, um, I've, I've, I felt that today it's really the right moment to talk more about Guruji and how I met him and my experiences which I normally don't disclose many will be in the books so we are we are working on some books in French and English but I was thinking okay let me just do something uh, wide and live and now we are on Facebook and on Zoom but it will be put on YouTube as well um, but don't worry, it will be just now according to the conditions of um, the data protection and image protection of everyone, okay? Uh, today I had a very, very nice session with future devotees and they were so, so sweet that I really felt that I want to give more and I want to answer more questions about this subject that is the Guru-Shishya relationship, Guru-Disciple relationship. So the term guru, you know, in our uh, Western society is misunderstood because people don't know sometimes Sanskrit, they just heard some stories. Um, but actually it's a very, very noble word. It means the one who is leading you from darkness to light and that is your spiritual guide. And you see, it's very normal to have teachers, people teaching us everything. If you want to learn to cook, you have a um, teacher who is teaching you to cook. If you want to learn physics, mathematics, we all had teachers. Our first teachers were our parents. But when it comes to the spiritual path, it's so misunderstood. It's like, oh, I can do it by myself. I can go far by myself, which is true up to a certain level. You can read many books. Uh, you can make researches. Um, we all had this moment when the spirituality suddenly came into our life. It was, uh, uh, you know, that moment in which we felt like making research and uh, we have been the spiritual seekers suddenly. Uh, so we started seeking and I think all of us had uh, a beginning somewhere, right? And had a journey. Um, whether we had some gurus before, so by this term I'm understanding, um, mentioning the spiritual teachers, okay? Because we had many gurus of different levels uh, but we, we say we have one Sadguru, we have only one Sadguru, which is like the Supreme Guru, who is leading us to enlightenment and who is, lead, is like the final Guru we have. It's like reaching home, but we can have, and maybe we had before, many Gurus in many fields. And music, if you want to learn classical Indian music, you need to commit to such a long path and that will be your teacher of Indian music. And we have some lessons now. We are on different groups. 
um, with a teacher who is teaching us ragas and Indian notes and we are following that. That is our music teacher. And we can have a yoga teacher, a certain form of yoga, um, as long as we are not committed to spiritual path we can be here and there, explore, have darshans of several gurus, we do whatever we want. But just remember, we were talking today about the devotee initiation and how to take refuge in a path and how to uh, give our trust to someone who is teaching us and guiding us. And this is where the commitment on the spiritual path comes and also uh, this guru shishya relationship you become a disciple the moment that you are ready we always say when the disciple is ready the guru arrives so you just remember your experience how you met your guru right we all had this experience how we met guruji and it's very sweet and if you want to share you can uh, we will just hear just know that we will hear your voice and if you go on Facebook and I will give you my profile, if you want to listen to yourself, you can, okay? I don't have any problem. I'm used to go live on many platforms. Uh, but just know that if you want to share something, it will be heard by many. And why not? I mean, there's one moment when we want, we want to share and to, yeah, to, to tell the world that we are happy and that everything is fine with us. And we found our path. We found what we were searching. So... Until you are thinking how you met Guruji, and maybe I will ask you some questions after, if you want to share, I will tell you my story. So I come from Romania, you know, I was saying a little bit today to those who were in, in the Devotee Explain course that I was born in Romania, and I started yoga at 15 years old, because I was having an inner uh, thirst to know more. I was feeling that I was searching for something, and you know when you're at school you say oh i think i'm waiting for holiday if holiday comes i will feel more happy and holiday came and i said no it's not this what is it and we had a talk at school about yoga and it was kind of forbidden to talk too much about you know exotical things and whatever is not you know how schools are it's this system in which we cannot just go freely talk about our inner journeys and even religion you know and yeah it's a different system it's normal uh, and someone talked about a yoga course and I went to experience and from the first moment I felt wow this is it I found it my body just went into the postures I felt so um, fine you know I felt everything was easy and uh, I started to practice and if you do properly the yoga system that is taught to you there are many many things which are opening and just remember for those who don't know that we have our special system of yoga called atma kriya yoga uh, that i recommend to you having done many years of yoga and different types now i'm practicing today atma kriya yoga that has been actually structured by Paramahamsa Shiswami Shunanda. Um, and when we go to a yoga uh, course, if you are not a seeker, so I was seeking for something, I wanted God, I wanted to understand. My mother was bringing me to church and I was having so many questions and the religion could not explain, uh, you know, all my philosophical things. Um, and uh, step by step, I started to discover uh, books about Hinduism and spiritual masters and I had many of them and uh, many came to me you know in the form of books and I was so enthusiastic I just felt that India uh, could give me some knowledge and on the other side I was having this yoga practice which was just normal system hatha yoga system but helped me so much at that time, you know, being a teenager, you have so much energy going on in you, you don't know how to channelize it, it's the moment in which you start being shy, and it's, you know, you don't feel well, and the yoga came at that moment, and it helped me so much. 
And after this, you know, studying uh, the yoga system and reading books about different masters, I started to have, you know, uh, a seeking, a deep seeking inside. And I was asking, who is my guru? Where is my guru? I have to meet my guru, you know, <laughs> because whatever I was reading in the Indian system is that um, uh, yoga in the traditional way, today we even have universities of yoga, schools of yoga, we have different systems, but in the Indian system, for whatever thing you want to learn, you go to a guru. If you want music, you go to a Sangeet guru. Sangeet means... Uh, the system of music. If you want a painting, you go to an art guru and so on. And I was searching for my spiritual guru. I have read Paramahamsa Yogananda, autobiography of a yogi. I, I saw that he was searching and I wanted to find my guru as well. And I had a dream <laughs> that my guru is in France, but I was in Romania, okay? I was speaking French because that was one of the languages I liked. And I had that dream. I said, wow, my guru is in France. I have to go to France. And somehow it all fell into place that I went to a contest of French. I had a very good grade. It was the moment in which the borders of Romania were opening because we had a revolution. If you know the history of communists, you know, in Eastern Europe, and suddenly the borders were open and we could travel. And my classroom, I was in a um, high school in which I, uh, I was uh, learning foreign languages. So uh, everyone, we decided to do a trip to France, an exchange, cultural exchange. And the town hall was very supportive and my parents too. So I came in France in 1995. Uh, and uh, I met a lot of people and I didn't meet my guru, <laughs> but I had a very nice cultural experience and I felt a connection with this country. This is a subject that I will treat in other um, satsang, like, you know, are there some past lives possible? Uh, maybe we lived in other countries and today we don't know. Uh, can we uh, feel that? Can we have those experiences? This is a whole thing. Actually, basically, my whole life until today has been guided by this as well. So now I, I'm blessed to always get hints about what my past lives were, or were. And also, of course, the gurus and the past ha has explained to me many things. Because some things are just crazy, you know, just going to a country and just feeling you... You don't want to leave from there. You start crying, you know, in some places. So I had this in my first trip in France. So it was very, very strong. And I came back to Romania. I said, wow, there's something with French language and France. Maybe I should go there to study. And I somehow forgot the idea of the guru because it didn't come at that moment. And that dream as well. And uh, I had, I applied to go and study at La Sorbonne, you know, that is a famous university. My parents were happy, everyone was happy, but I wanted to know where is my guru in France, you know. So I came to France um, and um, uh, it took me three years more uh, to meet my guru. So I came to France in 1990, uh, 1997 and I met my guru in 2006. 2000, 2000, 2000, three years after. And uh, it was completely not the guru I was expecting. It was something completely different. I wanted an Indian guru. I had an idea, you know. I want an Indian guru. I want to do this like this. I want him to be in yoga. Uh, I don't want too much other exotical stuff. And actually, no, I met someone very simple at the beginning. <laughs> but he was the person who came in my dream as being, you know, my guide. And I spent actually eight years with this, I, I call him like my, my first spiritual teacher, real spiritual teacher who worked on me. Because at the beginning, if you, if you have done some research before, if you read a lot of books, you feel very learned, right? And I was like, wow, this guru actually doesn't know yoga. I want yoga. I want this. And it took me some time and he had an amazing guidance which was very simple. He was just looking at you, 
how you are, how you do things, how concrete, how practical you do the things. And I was in a lot of spiritual experiences. <laughs> and I was like, oh, but I'm seeing this. I'm seeing this light. I feel Jesus. I feel it is like crazy. And he somehow brought me something very simple. And uh, we had uh, many uh, travels together. And thanks to him, I started to travel to India in 2002. And I discovered like the main places in India, temples and uh, uh, many gurus that were alive by then and uh, other samadhis of gurus, I mean special places in which their uh, ashes are put or their body, uh, you know, many what we call jiva samadhis, places in which there is a special live energy of the saints. And this will be another subject of the satsang about the saints of India. That is amazing, you know. India is such an amazing country. And uh, I hope we'll have time to talk more about this. One of the next satsangs, because it's one of the country in which I often go. So since 20 years, I'm going and coming from India. And uh, I'm so blessed to have uh, many experiences. And since, since six years now, Guruji is guiding me where to go, how to go, and I'm reporting him of what I find there and people that I meet. So coming back now to my first mentor, um, it's thanks to him that I discovered India and also thanks to him that um, I became very good in communication. He said, he always said, you are good in communication. You have to do something with communication. And I was in charge of communication. <laughs> So I was in charge of seeing what is everyone doing, organizing events, even cooking. I was cooking for, for webinars. This is how I can share with you a lot of recipes. Today we're talking about vegetarian food because I was in charge of cooking and the organic food. And that was an amazing seva, you know, seva means service. Usually when you are with a guru, you have to serve because by serving, you are uh, doing something which is very practical and it helps you to calm your mind because you are so much to an action that you want to do good uh, for the well-being of others and of course including your guru because you love your guru you want to serve so that that time of serving helped me so much so I did a lot of things communication creating websites and at that time 2003 I came to know Guruji Paramahamsa Vishwananda because while going online, I found one of his pages by then. He was on a, his page was on a channel called MySpace, which was usually for artists. Someone opened his page there and you know, here it is, this young guru, you know, very sweet, very young. And it was written, enlightened guru. And when I saw he had my age, you know, I said, oh my God, he's enlightened. I'm same age. Why am I, why am I not enlightened? I'm losing time here. You know? This is my first thing. Then I said, okay, calm down. Maybe you will meet him one day. And that was something that I, I really set uh, inside. That intention that I want to meet him and understand how come he's so young and he is enlightened and he is, it, you know, his, his process is finalized. I was serving because we say, yes, you have to do your spiritual path to reach enlightenment. Uh, uh, usually on many, many Hindu path, we have this idea that we have to reach enlightenment and even be God, right? So some philosophies are telling you, you are God, God is there, but you are also God. Everything is God. It's final. You are God. Just calm down. Everything is you. Uh, but on our version of a path, I was saying that we are more into service. We are servants of God. Why? Because by serving, serving is the best way to go into humility and also to calm down our mind, our ego, and just forget. Even ultimately this this aim of reaching enlightenment, it's still a desire that has to be removed for enlightenment to come, right? So better not to worry about that. Many people are asking, especially after Darshan, oh, oh, what is to be self-realized? What is to be fully realized? What is to be an avatar? I mean, it's okay. If you need to know it, 
that knowledge will come to you. Guruji will take your part saying, okay, now you have to do this. You reach this level, fine, blessing, just go and do. So don't worry about the final destination. We will have some courses. I was saying that in the devotee course, I will do a devotee course uh, on 30, 31, on 6th and 7th. Actually, all these four dates, it will be in French and English. And in this course, we will talk a lot about what is Hinduism also, what is a Vaishnava, what is our path, um, what, is, what are the mantras we have to know, um, the knowledge that is associated to us, and what is these different visions between the philosophy of Advaita Vedanta, non-duality, which says you are God, and Vishishta Advaita, that is our philosophy, which means non-duality in a special way, special why, because we don't want to reach anything. We know that we are part of Him, part of the Supreme. We have the same qualities because He's in our heart, but we don't um, have this enlightenment and even power in the same quantity we are not him in the same quantity right and we have to be very logical we cannot do what avatars are doing and if you read whatever book about the supreme beings called avatars who are incarnating in the um, on the planet earth when the dharma is you know uh not balanced on the dharma is not good the dharma is declining we have this in bhagavad gita yadaya daya dharma sya we have this nice quote which says whenever the dharma is declining i am taking a form on the planet earth and these beings are from other dimensions they come on our planet earth and they do a lot of lilas, divine lilas, like being here and in Himalaya at the same time. People are seeing them in different places. They materialize the thing here, uh, like, you know, Gurji was throwing one day uh, one strawberry, the other person received a ring, you know, on the other side. And so many other things you have. I have my ring at home and my ring disappears. Uh, and then I, I find another ring materializing other part and so on there are many 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 experiences you have this book called blossoming of the heart you can find on bhakti shop i put the i put the title in the chat uh and then i put in the comments of, of uh, facebook also for those who are listening on facebook blossoming of the heart and in this book you have a lot of experiences of devotees who saw guruji at different places who received special blessing, who saw him appearing on the, um, on their screen. Uh, yesterday I had, and actually I had a witness because always a satsang is popping up in my phone. <laughs> Two times it happened. I can't find it in my phone. I made a special satsang on my YouTube. You can search it's Swamini Vishwagudavari Mata YouTube channel. And there I have a story called the greatness of uh, Paramahamsa Vishwananda saying how Actually, this, um, uh, this satsang is just coming like this. And it's always about a lot of inspiring things that I have to listen to. And yesterday I was with Annie Karuna because I'm in Belgium with Annie Karuna here. <laughs> you see her in the, in the Zoom, yeah. And uh, she was with me. I just moved my phone and this satsang started. We heard Guruji's voice both. And I said, you see, I told you I have that satsang. And now look, it's just starting. I wanted to listen to that satsang yesterday when I went to sleep and actually disappeared from my phone. I cannot find it. I didn't find it anymore. So it's crazy because that satsang, when it pops up, it always tells me things that I have to know at that moment. We are so busy. Guruji is doing so many satsangs. Now he is on Bhakti Marga Mauritius channel. You have all the darshan satsangs. We cannot always be online with him because we have so much to do. And he comes. And he gives me personal satsang, you know. Um, again, something happened very funny. Uh, is that uh, I was in India one night in uh, the quarantine. And I was in a room in which there was a mouse. 
and that mouse uh, at night was roaming here and there in the room and I was always scared it will come on my head and suddenly that mouse jumps on on another bed I was in a uh, in a place in which there were several beds you know in a in a hostel for students and suddenly that that mouse is waking me up so I wake up and I said wow look this mouse woke me up what I'm doing now I said okay I will see gorgeous satsang <laughs> I go on Facebook and I click on the button to see gorgeous satsang and there is the image of a mouse coming <laughs> and it says oh he's very beautiful and I said oh my god there's a mouse very beautiful mouse where am I am I I was thinking someone you know, made of uh, like a forward of Guruji Satsang and made like something like a joke. I click on it once more and I reach Guruji Satsang and there up it was written, he's very beautiful, but that was Guruji. <laughs> okay, so I said, look how he's waking me up through a mouse to see a Satsang. So I had so many experiences. I can spend hours and hours to tell you. This is why all will be written. There will be books coming and... Um, about these experiences and about Guruji as a whole because it's a lot every day he's giving us experiences so it's too much hopefully you know I write down some things I record some things so I always track myself and my progress because it's simply amazing and I was saying today that it's he's very special because he has this amazing energy beyond his body he can be present everywhere he can know all of us and he can know exactly details about you which only you know okay and uh, like for example he knows if uh, you are at home in pyjama and you just you know do some work and you are just you come out from your bed or uh, maybe sometimes you know he's just like teasing us with things he knows about us and he will just joke with that and you just realize he knows, right? Uh, at some moments he was going to uh, to check the rooms, you know, see how the residents are keeping the rooms and he knows exactly how the room was five minutes before he came because you heard he's coming to check. And how is it? He knows everything about us. So I remember this story about Krishna uh, Lila's, you know, when he was in, in Vrindavan and when he uh, has taken all the clothes of the gopis and he climbed in a tree and they had to come naked to take their clothes from him right and that is this is how we have to be in front of a master because he knows what is our mind <laughs> where are we going we cannot hide things from him um and uh, and that's good because it gives us trust right confidence and if we cannot be fine and with our guru we cannot be sincere be ourselves with whom will we be because even in our family sometimes we cannot trust some people right uh, sometimes we have we feel more friendly with people who are not from our blood family and so on uh, so it's very very important to uh, work on this trust and confidence towards the guru so that is one of the obstacles we have and that obstacle comes from our mind because on the path, you know, at the beginning, we always say on the spiritual path that there is a honeymoon period. Uh, that uh, everything is fine, you feel loved, you have such a beautiful relationship with the Guru. Until you commit more, right? And when you commit more, he's also revealing other dimensions of yourself. Just remember Bhagavad Gita. How is Lord Krishna revealing himself to Arjuna? At the beginning, he's like a friend. He's even, you know, related to them in the family. He appears very friendly. He even moves himself the chariot in front, in the middle of the Kurukshetra field, right? He's the charioter. He's the one moving ourselves. That is also very symbolical. But at the same time, how humble he is. That Arjuna says, please move my chariot there. And he's doing it. And then how he reveals himself to Arjuna step by step. And um, he is finally showing him his multiple dimension in chapter 11, his Vishwarupa, right? Vishwarupa form. And he, he gives a darshan with his multiple dimensions. And that is simply amazing. And this is how in our relationship with the Guru, we can see many, many dimensions of him. 
and especially Guruji, he will always show himself like a friend as well. Like he has so he's so flexible, you see. With some some gurus are not. Some gurus will always come on their you know, um, yeah, in their way. But but here we have someone who is so understanding, you know, for our dimension and comes down to us and it's our friend and and he knows how to talk to us so that we understand it takes time to us how many times is guruji telling the same satsang again and again the same things he's saying all the time in a different way right with different stories i was just thinking oh my god i would never have so much patience you know like when we want to go fast and you want to have like qualified people directly why we should take so much time but he's the best example of how we can go step by step and uh, you know just take time with people and with ourselves every one of us uh, giving ourselves love and say okay it's fine you can do better just improve no problem and he is like this of course when we have to move fast he will find a way to tell us don't worry he will come in your dream he will tell you do this do that <laughs> you know it happens and sometimes the next day you just say, oh, Guruji told me this. A devotee recently said, Guruji told me I should start working. He, because he was very involved in building new temples. And he said, Guruji told me I have to work. Uh, he was not feeling like starting a work again. Because sometimes we have that unbalance, a state that we like spiritual life, but we don't like material life. And we would like to be only spiritual things. And uh, yeah, I mean, we have to be balanced. If we are born in Western world, we have also to fulfill our duties until the right moment comes for some things. If we can move uh, faster, good, but always take care of what you have. Don't run away from the world. And at the same time, don't be too much attached to the world. And all this we are learning together. And Bhagavad Gita is the best example to learn these things. It's an amazing book. We are having satsangs and we'll open to the public now the first time that I do after a long time uh, live um, on Facebook. Nice to see you everyone. I just neglected you until now, uh, but we will open actually wide public Bhagavad Gita lessons and understanding Hinduism. And let's all get enriched with all this. So, all is fine until now? You feel good? <laughs> If you want to share something, just write in the chat. Write questions. Whenever you feel something is like, oh, I don't want to forget this. I want to ask this question. Just put it on the chat. So like this, you know, I will answer after the question. Uh, if you are on Facebook, put it on the Facebook chat. I'm, I see the Facebook messages and ways and all this coming. I just, I will try to wave to you. Um, and so we can cover some questions. And how do you feel about having a guru? Is it... Uh, something that is speaking to you this is for the public because here we are between devotees and followers and we already know where we are standing um so how i met guruji so i told you i saw his website and it is so sweet and humble there were two pictures of guruji one in a bus in mauritius and he was dressed you know in a very simple way with a t-shirt and jogging and another one in nature outside so he was uh, near the seaside and he was having his hands you know up like this and he was again dressed like in a sport way you know i was thinking oh okay he was doing some yoga there but by seeing these pictures, I didn't feel he was a great guru. You know, I have to be very sincere with you because today I, I decided I would be very sincere. Whatever I thought, I will tell you because it's important to know that is normal, right? I said, well, but what is this? It's just too simple to just be like this in nature and with people and be enlightened, right? I was waiting for something very special. And, and this is what I did after because I still continued after 200, 2003. I continued to study yoga. I was having my first guru who was a healer. I was doing things with him, but still I was not fulfilled. I didn't find like, you know, the best guru, Indian guru I wanted. But I missed guru, Guruji at that time because he was too simple in my mind. And it's just like this. I was not ready then to join. 
And uh, I didn't know that actually one, when he was having his hands up, he was actually raising the waves behind him. So he was calling the waves of the sea and the sea was responding. And all the great gurus are mastering the elements. Today, Guruji said, if you have done the darshan, he said, I just did the Muruga procession. And after I did the Arati, it started to rain. <laughs> he said this. And we know that Guruji will make uh, a rain appear whenever he wants. And there was a nice experience of Partha, uh, uh, which, who was saying that uh, uh, a, a rain appeared in the ashram. There's a very, very nice story. I don't want to tell it myself because it's in a satsang. And with Makari, it's very special. Not so long ago, he did that. Um, and for the special satsangs, which will go like wide, I made a new channel. So I will give you the link uh, about the channel because uh, in this channel, I will give you also other resources like satsangs and we keep in touch. I know that you know what I talked and, and we talk like, you know, knowing each other. Okay. And for Facebook as well, I will give the link. It will be like a full channel, but you can leave comments. You can make comments. You cannot comment on the channel, but you can leave some comments. So I didn't know that actually he was mastering the elements. He was calling the wave. The sea was answering him. Just, just imagine. It's just beyond understanding that suddenly the sea is answering you. Uh, and that you say, okay, please rain come. And rain is coming. And so many more experiences are there with Guruji, you know. I was in Kumbha Mela in 2019. And... Uh, uh, it started to rain so strongly and a storm, a big storm was there. And I had a bungalow, you know, in uh, bricks and like, like a small house. But many, many sadhus, many monks were outside and they were having just some, you know, some plastic sheets around them. And I was feeling, oh my God, what they will do? They're already, you know, so poorly dressed because this is the, the sadhu lifestyle to renounce to everything. And what they will do if even, you know, the small thing that they were having some, uh, some metal stuff, you know, when, when we are, we go in a, into a slum and it's all this, you know, brick a brock <laughs> style, you know, uh, brick a brock, we say in French, you know, all these things together. And they say, oh my God, how they are living. But they were having the amazing fire in the middle, you know, and they were sitting there. It was so sweet. I will tell you more about that when I will talk about my pilgrimages in India. You know, they were near the fire in such a peaceful atmosphere. Even if it was like so poor around, they were so full of the divine, you know. And I wrote to Gurji. Gurji was online with me and I said, Gurji, there is a storm right now. I mean, I'm so worried about people. And I can tell you in some minutes it was over. And I said, Gurji, it's just amazing. I just told you there is a storm. And he said, yes, Jay Sriman Narayana. <laughs> You know, I, I didn't do anything. He did all. Because Guruji is in this dimension, right, of the Supreme. And I knew at that time that it was him. Another time, now during my quarantine in India, I was six months in India from um, February to August. Uh, I had problems to come back. <laughs> Four flights were canceled. And I had this monks that, uh, you know, very simple life... Uh, experience and I had one day I was supposed to go in some place and I was not sure it's the right thing and a big big storm came and I was just laughing because I told Guruji Guruji I don't feel like going there I don't know if I have to go and Guruji didn't have time to answer but he answered through this rain and storm and I was just laughing because now I know when it's him you know uh, and it's so funny. There's so many experiences. Maybe I will continue the satsang level two will be experiences, more experiences. Okay. Because it's nice to see in how many ways the divine can come to us. And especially an avatar who has many, many dimensions, how he can at the same time be very simple, but just move matter, move people, move situations. Uh, it's just fascinating. It's something that uh, I wish you all to experience, and I'm sure you have many experiences already, if you are not aware that he starts working, you know, in you. And this is how you came here, because it was his will. And when we have, you know, our guru, uh, he will always uh, bring us to him. Uh, it will just happen. 
at the right moment will just pop up and it will be there. And it's actually Krishna energy. Krishna will bring you from everywhere. Krishna was the one stealing the butter. And why he was stealing in all the houses? Because he was feeling, oh, this is mine. I'm the Lord of the universe. What is this? My butter, my <laughs> jam and all. I'm going and taking everything. It's mine. And this is how the Krishna Prem, love will come and will take us all to him. And when I say Krishna, I said all the forms, you know, all the avatars of Vishnu, Mahavishnu, and many more saints, many more incarnations of this supreme Sriman Narayana uh, and the supreme, the supreme energy, which is even formless. We say Nirguna aspect without form, okay? Uh, so I so I just missed that occasion but anyway I was still with my first guru and you know when you have a guru you have to commit I was talking today we spent several hours talking about commitment uh, and the same way that we commit in any relationship we commit to learn something we commit to a special energy so Guruji's energy and our Vaishnava lineage energy is special. It is a certain sort of energy. Here you have some type of practices and it's not good to mix everything from everywhere because you'll be confused. One is saying, please be in silence, do Vipassana meditation, something. And someone else says, no, go express and, you know, dance. So for, you know, you will be confused. This is why it's good to take refuge somewhere. And this is what Bhagavad Gita is all about. How to reach surrendering. Final surrendering. What is final surrendering? We call this Sharanagati. And it is reached in chapter 18. Arjuna finally understands. Even when he had the big, big vision of Krishna, he didn't understand. He got scared at that one point. At the beginning, he said, oh my God, Lord, you are everything. I bow down to you. I didn't understand. I'm sorry. I took you as a friend. I'm sorry. You know, you will see this so, so sweet. You know, as we are doing, sorry. I was thinking you are a friend. Maybe I have been disrespectful sometimes by thought, by deed, by whatever. Um, but actually, you are the Lord of the universe. And now I understood. But the more he was saying, you know, this big dimension unfolding in different, different dimensions and powerful. And he became scared, especially when he saw that whoever he had to fight with were already dead, all of them, <laughs> you know, and they were eaten by Krishna, by time, that there is the Lord of time, that special vibration of time. He is this kala we also call kala the time so that is also in krishna because he is the creator he masters the time he masters the creation he was saying we were seeing now yesterday bhagavad gita chapter 14 that he has put the seeds uh you know in our souls the seeds of creation the seeds of evolution he is everywhere he says i'm in the creation but i'm also out of it so he is in every one of us, but at the same time, he's beyond us. He's beyond of everything. And that is this big, big dimension of him. So I missed that occasion. And I was thinking, oh, maybe I was not ready. It's okay. And also I missed it because I took the things, you know, at the first degree. Like, okay, he seems simple. Oh, I wanted this. I wanted that. Maybe it's not the right moment. Okay. And I just move on. But inside I said, one day I have to meet him. And for me, it, he was in India because I saw his Indian. Uh, there was no location, you know. Those pages of MySpace were like, you have a profile and you have something about you. And usually it was recording, recordings of, um, of your uh, music because it was an artist platform. And he had only pictures. I don't know who created that at that moment, but I, I fell on that. Uh, then I continued to do my path and um, uh, I was I started to have like all kinds of inner manifestations I will also talk more about myself you know step by step because I started to listen to mantras I wanted to learn mantras and my 
guru by then my teacher said listen i don't know about all this you should explore more you know in india see find a music guru do something because i cannot explain you that he was very good in other ways i came to know his way as well and i have many experiences with them but i'm not here for that um and anyway i started to be to feel a call to india which is very very strong and in 2002 uh, we started to make travels. So 2003, I saw Gurdjieff's, uh, um, actually this page that I told you. Then 2004, 2006, I came back to India again. I brought my family as well. I explored a lot. Um, and then after that, my father was very ill in Romania, 2007. And I went to Romania to see him. And I informed, I told my guru, I have to go and see him. I had a particular relationship with my father, who was also my inspiration for music, for many, many things I learned from him, from my mother as well, but now really I was concerned about his health and I asked for the permission to go and at that moment I just felt that there was a transition in my life. Uh, and that I was, I was not knowing that I was, you know, one cycle was finished. We say that in our life we have like cycles. You know, it happens. I can be every seven years, every eight years, like around seven years, that you always move forward. And if you didn't find your guru, your sad guru, you keep searching and searching. So I went to Romania and Romania entered in um, European community. It was 2007. And I was feeling, oh my God, after all the spiritual, you know, adventures and pilgrimages, I don't feel like going home uh, just to see my parents only. Okay, I know I have to be there for my father. And I know that coming to him and then, you know, empowering him, like, what is this? Why are you ill? Just uh, stand and you have to be fine. You know, it works sometimes when we love people, just telling them, please don't let go hold on and be strong. I don't want you to go, you know, and you just can't create something. I just tell you, because if you have some friends who are ill, just know that you can have that power to help them. Don't let them sing. Don't let anyone be sad more than five minutes. Don't let anyone be self-centered unless they are working on themselves to express emotions. If they want to express emotions, put some music, say, okay, dance, cry, now is the moment help them right take the mirror you can cry but don't cry without observing yourself because it's you know it's a never ending thing this is why all the psychanalyses and psychotherapists who do a work since years they don't help us to solve things deeply but the spiritual path spiritual techniques spiritual practice help you to do it and beyond all these techniques, there is the surrendering. Krishna says, I don't want anything from you. I want your love. Just love me. Love the divine. If you are consuming yourself in this love, it's done. You are surrendered. Then you don't have to do big pujas, big sadhana, big thing. Just come, surrender at my feet sincerely and don't come back surrender it's like you are climbing on second floor and you throw the stairs you know it's okay i don't to be sure you don't come down but usually what we do we say yes i take refuge in you but i have some expectations if you are not fulfilling that i'm coming to you because i want this this and that and if you are not fulfilling that I will go to other guru because other guru will be better. I will go to other things. So we always have, uh, you know, this plan A, B, C. And he's saying, no, single pointed devotion. He says in Bhagavad Gita, chapter 18, if you take refuge in me and you choose only me, you know, that is like in a love relationship. We are not loving several people. It happens, but we are not loving in the same way everyone. There is always something that we love more. We have water and orange juice. We will like orange juice more sometimes, some of us, right? So it's like this. Uh, so that preference. So choose him as a preference and surrender to him and you will not be deceived. 
and he says this and that is one of the mantras so i cannot disclose it because that is initiation mantra but he says if you surrender yourself to me i will help you to go beyond suffering and i will help you to clean your sins what cleaning karma he will liberate you of all the past karma and some scars, impressions for past lives. He will clean everything in you and he will take your whole space. And he says as well, you will become like me. My devotees are dear to me and they start radiating me. Okay, I will give you, when we do Bhagavad Gita, now next, uh, next lesson I will give you, you know, the verses, we are chapter 14 and we will move towards, we have a, this special session um, on every Wednesday in which we have this, you know, the last chapters, which are really so strong. And there we have some key verses and for those who will take the devotees initiation, you will get those mantras and you have to learn those mantras and to, to tell it to remind yourself that you choose a path and if you go on this path fully he, the path will reveal itself to you and Guruji will reveal himself to you step by step in different ways we have so much to explore actually so I continue my journey <laughs> <laughs> and I go to Romania and I say what to do here and I saw there are many poor people uh, some people who are neglected by the, um, some communities and I say I have to do something for my country and I open a charity organization at that time and I started to do some charity actions I found some family and I asked my mother listen I don't know how to choose people who is more poor than whom it will break my heart just see if you have some families and one by one these families just came to me and I started to help some families, some children and basically I started to do karma yoga, yoga service and I was so happy because you see I have been meditating since years, doing yoga, uh, reading things, following even all kinds of meditations because my, my, my previous teachers were doing this but still I didn't have the occasion to serve just serving others and now in this pandemia time is the best moment to see around you who needs help first to raise yourself you know <laughs> krishna says you raise yourself by yourself and he tells you know, arjuna directly what's wrong with you beginning of chapter two what's with you why are you so you know manless you don't have you know you 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 uh you know lost your power as a man and you are there just crying like a woman he's just teasing him uh that is something that makes a reference to Mahab mahabharata you know part in which they were in disguise the pandava and they were disguising themselves as women as matajis and anyway krishna is saying this just because he wants to push him to raise and stand on his feet and stop like complaining and be strong and today you know it's very very important to be strong very more than ever to not go into fear into panic uh, to believe in something in yourself uh, to find the best way to work something or be creative online get together with friends do creative activities um, I have several groups and in those groups we are doing Japa, Om Namo Narayanaya Mantra, uh, we are doing Sadhana, I am an Atma Yoga teacher, Simply Meditation teacher, Project Mantra instructor and so on, so techniques we have, let's get together and practice, let's sing bhajans, uh, let's talk about ourselves, Let, let's cry and dance together. So I have a group every Monday we are meeting to empower ourselves and to work on relationships and whatever things we have and career and job and family to feel good, right? We cannot neglect this even if you are on the spiritual path. If you don't have money and we are, we are hungry, what we will do? Yes, maybe with the grace of God someone will come to help you. Uh, and but maybe we can help each other let's make community virtual communities right now we have some projects of ashrams and those who are you know close to me they know and some seva groups so step by step we will talk about everything so just keep in touch and we will see how all this will unfold 
there is never anything that happened by chance. The fact that you are all here today, 25 people on Zoom and some on Facebook, I don't have the number, um, some because people are going and coming on Facebook, uh, on Zoom it's stable. <laughs> so these 25 nice people who had time now, it's you all. Uh, there is a message for you, what Guruji wants you to know, uh, what you know, what you, why we are here, why we are family, every one of us. So I'm just greeting all my Facebook uh, friends. Uh, there is something, a message that you need to get. Now we will be together, walk together. Uh, we will just meet from time to time. Everyone decides we are free. And today we have never had so many programs in Bhakti Marga organization where we are. We have so many things happening every moment. We have two, three, four links, you know, if you want to sing, if you want to dance, if you want to, you know, to do something else, listen to sad songs and... Um, uh, yes, uh, I have start to have questions. Keep keep asking questions in Facebook and in Zoom, and I will make a special moment. I will answer you. Uh, so yes, it is profusion of everything, but this is also encouraging us to be like tourists here and there. Guruji likes when we commit, uh, whether it is for your country a project, whether it is with a Swami Swamini group encourage something and as a devotee i said it is good to do some seva um, and to progress to do something it will help you so much we are so much self-centered and especially if you feel bad if you have some crisis of sadness every now and then i tell you the best way to be happy is to think of others and share with others, whether it is your neighbor or whoever it is, go on social media and tell everyone you're happy, uh, do a concrete action somewhere. Uh, we can talk about that because I, I'm on Facebook groups since I think the beginning of internet. <laughs> and this is how I met my first guru on internet. Internet is something amazing. It's like a big database of knowledge. So meet people, talk to people, make friends, family, it's mondial family today. It's not only our close people. So don't be shy. Just go and spread something and see who is liking you. Get to know people, you know, sincerely. Uh, don't think everyone is there to take something from you. Don't block people. I let everyone in. Then I have a lot of problems. I have to explain that. Listen, I'm a little path. I don't need relationships. I'm tell telling this my my Facebook friends because that is a big misunderstanding today. I allow 800 people. Like almost everyone is in fantasies today. It's so sad. I mean, people are so much attached to their body, to pleasures, to having relationships, to this. But it's not only this in life, you, you can have so much more. And I'm talking here about meeting God incarnated on earth and getting so many amazing, you know, experiences, something beyond. No one can love us as much as Krishna can love us. It's sure. He understands us. Only God, I have, um, I saw one day uh a lady doing some programs and she was talking about her childhood saying when i was a child i was searching for love i was waiting uh, for someone to love me and i just understood one day when she was very young no one will love me as much as god can love me i'm so deceived and this is how we are we are waiting for people to complete us we are waiting for uh you know be happy in relationships but other people are also waiting so we are like two empty pots you know, waiting to be full, but it's better to feed yourself with something and then go and help others. If you are not full, you will always be suffer from relationships, I can tell you, <laughs> because it's, you know, you, it's like, oh yeah, one half is meeting other half. We are not uh, too strong. We meet someone who is stronger than us because we don't want to be strong. So someone stronger will complete us whatever things that uh, our partner is doing we are not doing because we are more weak or we are more powerful and he is just weak and it will always be like this you know unbalanced but when you are full of love and you just go and spread it it's over it's fine you are so fulfilled really i wish all of you to feel that and even continue to have relationships but from this point of view i'm coming to give you something that is unconditional love. I don't come always to ask for something and then cry I didn't have it. And we do that even with a guru. People come with their agenda. I come to this guru because I want this, 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 this. And many people come with a lot of projections. 
on the guru but he's there for that okay he's there to help us as well so don't worry he will really beautifully help you and understand you and come in your dreams and you will feel Guruji and you will project things but that doesn't matter for him because he's so much beyond that and this is why he's there because he is our ultimate relationship you know it's like you want a relationship with God God is formless because you don't know even the sky look the sky is has no limit so God you know how much more illimited God can be but God is making himself form and coming to you and this is how you can see him Krishna has taken form Hinduism is not mythology is not nice stories for children to go to sleep no it's a reality Shiva has walked on planet earth Krishna has walked on planet earth he was a baby he was a grown-up teenager he was uh, Krishna from Dwarka he left he was in the war of Mahabharata and he did all these things and there are places in which you can feel his energy and because he's so multi-dimensional we say that even today the Rasa Leela you know that dance with the gopis the gopis are these women and the gopas are also some men who were with him who were his companions of games and naughty things and <laughs> you know and this Rasa Leela this dance with the gopis is still taking place in Vrindavan and it is forbidden normally to go and watch this at night because it is not for us I don't, anyway our human eyes cannot see and also is not good because yeah there is a special atmosphere around and it is I'm telling you what the Hindu tradition says okay so whatever I tell you is because the tradition says this and they are specific reasons for what some things cannot be disclosed yet some in some places we cannot be okay so yes so much is there so much and for all the devotees and everyone who wants to become a devotee you can really you know discover so much it's so illimited knowledge when we come to yoga usually i started with yoga path i didn't have any problem i wanted to learn but some people say okay i go to do yoga because it will help me to sleep better i have this digestion problem i have this lack of flexibility and we go and it's like a triangle you know there is a point and you start from some point and it's suddenly opening opening like a reverse triangle this is how it is a spiritual path it's so much so much it depends on you how much you want to take you know and you will receive as much as you want that is the beauty of it and you will evolve as you want especially in our path i said that they are free people followers coming and going they just love guruji we are not passing them anything they can continue their life their work their relationships and also their other activities can have darshans of all the gurus they want but still they like guruji as well it's fine and then there are the devotees who are taking refuge in him they say this is my guru i know today that it's him i maybe had some obstacles because our mind is like this and this is why i'm here today to talk also about the obstacles and krishna says our mind it's our best friend but also our enemy and this is how it is you know mind will love guruji at one point and then he will be against him our heart will love guruji mind will be the obstacle saying what is this who is this uh, just take care uh, just see you know it's like this because we have been raised like this always to to see what problem is there and in our western society is like this oh this group oh it's on blacklist other group it's on blacklist everything is on blacklist but what is on white list political things and but so many things are there which is sometimes are not bringing us anywhere i'm not you know a fan of this but of course we have to know what is the politics the things even that even if you know today even some politicians are good and some they're very special people but you know what is there else in which we can trust more 
we trust, you know, there was a very nice story, Gurdjieff uh, told it, and maybe you also read it on Facebook, saying that whenever we take a boat, a plane, a taxi, we never doubt about the driver. You know, I took so many times a taxi in India, <laughs> in all condition, without belt, seat belt, with the maximum speed on a way in which were a lot of cars. And I never worried. I know I trust the driver. But how can you trust the driver? We just you just met met him, right? In the plane, we say yes. Being in a plane is one of the most secure way of to travel. Yeah, but you don't know the pilot. What do you know about him? And here is the same thing. When you meet the guru, you cannot see him. He knows who you are. You don't know who he is. But still, we start. Oh, what is here? Is it something that, you know, I should trust and not trust? And this is going on inside us. And the more we go on the spiritual path and the more we are challenged inside and there will be special strong energies coming in us, the more we go, the more we receive and these energies are moving us. A lot of, you know, purification happening. Maybe we'll cry a lot. If you are on a bhakti path, you will cry like hell, you know, I mean, sometimes at the beginning, you know, and I met Guruji and I will come to that after. I was crying and crying and I said, Guruji, I cannot look to your pictures. I just moved the pictures away because I'm just crying. Because my soul knows, my mind doesn't know. My mind says, what are you stupid? Why are you crying? Just calm down. You cannot do your cooking. You're there cooking your house. You're just sitting and crying, seeing Guruji, you know? And I had to say, okay, just stop this, stop this crying. And I said, okay, the best thing is not to see Guruji's pictures. So I was putting the pictures, you know, aside so that I could continue my everyday life. It was so strong. And I know many of you have these experiences, you know, that uh, I have many people saying, yeah, I woke, I wake up in the morning and I feel like crying. I don't know why. And because there is a constant purification inside. And here you are on a hard path. Bhakti Marga, the path, the yoga of love, Bhakti Yoga, Marga means path, okay, so the, the love way, so all the love ways you have to explore, you cannot say, oh, I have been so sad in my relationship, I come here, I will have love, no, you have to face even what was wrong there, and to love that person as well, and to open to more love, and become loving, and if you are too much angry, that has to calm down, and so on. A very very special path very difficult but very easy you know you say okay just love that is our message just love but it's so difficult actually to love properly in unconditional way to love normally it's easy because we all know some type of love right uh, we loved our parents we loved our boyfriends we love this and that but unconditional love just loving for loving without expecting anything in return it's not so easy, but it can be attained from the heart. And the closest form of love, uh, the closest form of unconditional love is the motherly love. If you had children or you love some children around, you know, that love is really unconditional because a mother is just ready to do whatever for the children. And they are so beautiful experiences. You know, I saw one day that a mother just hold the car, you know, I mean, she just moved and raised, uplifted the car because she was scared that her child will go under. So imagine the power that got awakened in her. And I did say one day I had a small, small like um, cupboard and uh, uh, in, in my child's room and the uh, you know, it was about to fall and I can tell you, you know, it was like Hanuman hand, you know, the way that I was holding that. It was not a very, very big stuff, but how I saw it at the right moment, you know. And when you see the birds, you know, live, I have a very nice video, I will put it on the channel, how a bird is making her nest, you know, and she's sewing, she's sewing with, you know, she's making, you know, in a, in a leaf, she's making a, a nest for her children. And he takes the time to sew and sew, you know, that leaf. And it's, it's holding nicely. And then she puts her nest in that. And then the children come. And then how, how much, you know, she's able to do. And if animals can do this, you imagine how amazing is this unconditional love. And that is the closest. And whenever you feel, you know, that love, that love can help you. 
you know whenever you feel that you are getting angry because yeah your lover didn't do this for you or your partner are like this just remember uh, you know this motherly love just go into the compassion i don't know other story inside i don't know what what fight is going on inside what past you know some people are hard because they had a hard past and we don't know what is that past and for that we have to be very humble and loving but the moment that the conflict is happening we just forget all this but if you go into that motherly love you know saying okay doesn't matter i have to take care of this one as i take care of my children <laughs> leave it you will have so much love inside and completely the whole thing will completely change it's like you see how many things did baby krishna you know he was really you know <laughs> pain in the ass he was just moving around running his mother was running after him but you cannot stop loving him he's so sweet even today if you see these pictures of krishna you say oh my god he's so sweet and this is how we are you know if you are mothers you know how many times we close our eyes because children do this and do that but we will never close our eyes for other members of family and other things we are like oh these people have to change like this and that but for our children we will really do everything and we have to be taught how to take some distance and be strict sometimes that is also love and all this we are learning also with the master with our teachers you know how to be strict because that is also loving how to respect yourself and say no because you say no to a child as well you will not let a child go and jump in the water by himself how much we are just looking left and right where is the child going where you know and even you see oh my god i'll have a child will i be able to wake up no that is just happening that love is so strong you will just wake up exactly when the, the child starts cry, to cry you know so much is there so easy is that instinct motherly instinct motherly love so that can help you in case you have some conflicts come into that space of unconditional love as literally mothers and fathers real mothers and fathers are doing that can help you to cross many things including this relationship with the guru guruji you know i had one story i can tell you the beginning you know i was new in the mission uh and um I had, uh, actually at the beginning they said, okay, you have to fill a page with all the countries you will be responsible of. And you know, before I said I was doing charity activities in so many countries, and when I reached Guruji's like a world of love, Bhakti Marga, I said, here, I will just have rest and love. <laughs> and one person comes and says, you have to check all the French-speaking countries that you will take. And I said, yes, put France and put the countries Guruji gave me when he initiated me in 2015. He said, okay, you can take care of France. We were not having a country so many then. Reunion Island, Morocco, uh, Madagascar, and what was there more? Romania, because that is also French speaking. And I'm coming from Romania. So I had all this. And I said, okay, put these countries. And the boy said, the person, you know, who was coming with the, the, this paper said, look, there is Mauritius. I said, I cannot take that. That is Guruji's country. No, but no one is there to speak French. And I said, okay, just, I don't know. He checked that, okay. And my appointed Swami was Swami Vijay. And Swami Pepe comes and he comes in the, you know, in the ashram. And I meet him. I said, listen, by the way, someone came to me and I checked these countries. Can you check with Guruji if it's okay? And Swami Pepe goes to Guruji and I receive a message from the Swami saying, you cannot take Mauritius, that is Guruji's country. I said, I didn't even want that country, please. You know? So it created in me something like, oh, I didn't want it. Anyway, it's too far, Mauritius, and it's too expensive to go there. You know, I was having my things. I would have never chosen it by myself. And it created an inner conflict. And after that, in the evening, we had a meeting with Guruji because we had Navaratri going on in the big tent outside and uh, Guruji came behind the curtain and it was Swamini's day we were all the Swaminis we were behind the curtain and I was cleaning the carpet <laughs> and Guruji comes in front of me Guruji knowing and feeling in which state I was without me telling anything he comes in front of me and he draws my attention saying so many so many look at me 
I am dressed like this because like this I can dance. And I looked at him and he was exactly, you know, like Krishna and Pandranga in a very sweet, innocent form, you know. I have the picture I can also send you there. And I was like, oh my God, he's actually so innocent. There's no one with whom I can fight, you know. So immediately, all my fight, my fighting mood just surrendered, you know. <laughs> and it was like amazing because I, at that moment I saw the power of love that, you know, motherly love can have. And so whenever you don't understand Guruji, and we cannot understand the Guru with our mind, we can understand him with our heart, whenever you just look, and you know, we have to be very sincere with ourselves, that sometimes our mind is crazy, and our mind can just say something at any moment, you know, you just see Guruji's picture and you just have a judgment of something. You say, oh my God, it's Guruji, you know, I, have to, I should not think of this. But mind is like this. Mind is dual. Uh, now we are very loving. Then we are very, you know, aggressive. And this is how it's going on. It's, it's part of our moods and our gunas. And if you see now, I said, yeah, chapter 14, you remember I was saying yesterday that our body is moved by these gunas. Now we are very pure. Then we are very rajasic, passionate. And other moments we are very lazy. And here we don't have much energy. And this is how we are going. We are going between these three moods until we can transcend that to go beyond. Okay. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's a whole thing, Guruji and his divine games. Uh, you know, we will we'll see step by step. If you have any questions until now, you can write it down and I will, let's let's have a small break because uh, you are not talking much so I don't want you to fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you have to close, uh, close your eyes and you're listening. I know many people are listening when they are in meditative mood because I'm sometimes speaking slowly. I made some effort. You see how much I improved my, my slow speaking, those who know me. <laughs> So, Jagru Swamini, the group you talk about on Mondays, was it the name uh, of this Telegram group? Actually, this group is called Vaishnava Lounge. And this is open to the devotees and followers of Swami Vishwananda. So this I will give on Zoom. It's called Vaishnava Lounge and I will try to find you the link. So just give me some minutes. I will go and get you the links of all the groups at the end. And you uh, can copy paste that. And even just if you have, if you are on your phone and you have Telegram, you just access the links and you join. And if not, I will copy paste this and give it to you in the groups where we were talking. Okay. But I will leave it here so you, you can copy paste as well in some minutes. Let me see if I have it because I want it. No, I don't have other things in the, uh, in the memory, but I will go because I have to just go down and, and see that and you will not see me on the camera. Okay. So yes, the groups are there. I said that I, I want to meet people because by being together, uh, so much is happening, you know, and um, we know that when two, three people are there for a cause and they come together sincerely with love, they can evolve together. That love is just happening. That loving atmosphere is getting created. And when we are invoking, now we are talking about Guruji. Guruji knows we are doing, we are here together. Okay. I just didn't send the link. I was thinking this is my first time. Let people not freak out. Guruji is coming, you know, because that will be like you will get scared there. But and also I know he's busy. He was having some darshans today. But let's see if we get together often. Maybe I will invite him to say hello to us. <laughs> okay, but we have to all to be prepared. So I was thinking I don't do this without telling you, even if it's very nice to see Guruji, but it's also always an experience. Uh, so it's okay. Let's start and see how it's going and know ourselves better. Uh, because about him, we can talk and talk for hours. Okay. So I let it just, just breathe in, breathe out and just relax a little bit and come back. Just see until now, how do you feel? How you have been going, what you have been 
like uh, experiencing until now and how your inner space just shifted since I was talking and how how many things until now just ring in you just click with you uh, and uh, after this satsang I want you all to write some things down for yourself what enrich you today what you find that good and uh, uh, what you want to put into practice and then we'll have more practice sessions we can also do mantra together I'm the, on Mondays I'm doing meditation I'm doing also um, dance with people. We have to dance. We are moving our body. We are moving our <laughs> our laziness. We are so much seated now. Uh, we can do some yoga. I'm just um, uh, setting this up because uh, it's it's another configuration, you know. And you all have to know we are doing that, so you can also put your cameras that I can see you when you practice. But we can do it online, we can do Atma Kriya Yoga online, so whoever doesn't have Atma Kriya Yoga, you want to do Atma Kriya Yoga, uh, please just write me as well, contact me. Let's continue to experience, to make a tour in all the beautiful things that Bhakti Marga has to uh, give us. Okay, there are people who have to leave, to have a course, if you need to leave, don't worry, just write me a message, so I know that if I give some links, you are not there, so just... Uh, to, to let you know after uh, but yes if you have some things because it is we will stay until eight o'clock we still have 40 minutes left so just um, you know don't worry uh, you can just you know like leave also if you don't have time you know how you just see the timing because you are listening and you forgot the time just leave okay no worries if you can drop a word drop otherwise I will I will see uh, who was there anyway to know you all uh, okay and maybe at one point I will close the live video and then we will talk among us so see if you, you just can just stay here so we can have some sharings I know you better I know who is here and from which country you are let me put now I put uh, every one of you even if I don't have the uh, yeah the videos but many of you I know because I see you and I, I know who is there good uh, okay, so if you need to go, just go. I know that both of you have to go to the course. Please go. It's okay. I will remember what I didn't tell you. And then next time I will start with that. Okay, don't worry. Okay, super. If you have to go to your ashram, you have to go to Arati, whatever. Just don't worry. Um, okay, so for those who are remaining uh, I will come now to the experience how I met Guruji uh, that is really such an amazing experience and that is something that I will tell often so no people who, no no problem whoever has to go you can I will repeat that because that is the core you know meeting the Guru is the core of all but I wanted you to know me better because I'm not talking much about myself I'm doing different programs and usually I don't talk about myself. Okay, I'm so many good avari. We are doing Bhagavad Gita. We are just listening to that, right? Um, so I was saying that uh, 2007, I went to um, Romania and I had this inspiration to do another organization and I started to do charity. And I was missing so much having a guru, you know, even if, of course, the, my first guru was not an Indian one, he was different. I will one day tell you more in details about all my spiritual meetings and different nice beings I know, but I was missing that, you know, I just felt how precious it is to have someone to whom you can send a message. You see Guruji is in the darshan, you just put the paper and write something on it. And if you write big enough, he will see it. You just have to show it to the camera and be sure he sees it in big. But you can ask him things. You can ask him something. Um, and even without you asking, he knows, but he wants you to do that so he can read quickly and answer. He will ask, answer you directly in the, uh, the um, first moment when he gives you know the first uh, you know words and he says now I will look at you at that moment he you can you know show your message show your date you have to get blessed by him 
and whatever you want to show picture if you have people to bless and he will answer you i saw him and if he doesn't answer it means that it's okay you can he didn't see you or maybe it's not the right time to have an answer but don't you know um be sad he's there for you and this is so precious you have swamis swaminis of the country uh we are writing often to guruji you have anything that is it's an emergency just use us we are there for you okay to send a message to him if you just have something you know uh, some on some things we can advise you we can guide you but if there is something very very important write us right that i don't know i i had something with my brother who didn't come at home he was, had an aggression in paris and i wrote to guruji and i was so fine i was thinking he will come my phone was not working his phone was not working landline was not working that day and at the hospital they wrote his name wrong so i could not find him and he was under observation 24 hours I wrote Gurji Gurji, something happened to my brother. His friends say that he had a, uh, an aggression, you know, a guy, a drunk guy uh, came out from the metro asking for money. They had a fight. My brother was also strong, so he didn't have much, you know. I have this story on my YouTube. I will give you my YouTube channel. Just make me think about that and forget. I'll put, you he put it here. Uh, so you have many, many stories. I said in my YouTube channel, I tell a lot how I received the lingam for Gurji, how I, uh, some healings happened. Many things are there. And this I, can, I will share in the group, in the famous group. Uh, I will share that with you. Uh, and uh, you, you will see, I mean, I, a lot is there. Even me introducing myself a lot. Just I didn't talk too much about myself. Let me get that group now. Uh, so that uh, we don't forget that. Because you have to come to that international channel. Um, and of course the close channels where you are if you are already on one of my closest channels I will uh, give you um, I will give you the link there as well but some people maybe come from uh, other channels I don't know if I'll put it for for example in study group with the swamis maybe I will not put it I don't want to disturb everyone now giving you know this channel okay this is a channel and it's called Swamini Godavari International because this will be um for everyone and in the uh facebook i will give you in the comments okay so you can join there okay uh so this is a channel please join there or otherwise uh write it and if you don't ha don't can't do anything now just write in the chat so i come back to you most of you are in my friends uh so i will find you and give you this link okay i know where you are so i can give it to you personally okay Okay, so I wait a little bit if you want to copy paste something and um, we just move on. Auntie, now everything is fine. You are fine, everyone. Super, let me see you. <laughs> nice. And on Facebook, everything is, is fine. <laughs> I have the... Hindi rade rade. I have people waving. I'm waving to everyone. Okay, sweet. Uh, and in India now, it's late for them. So this is why many left. But it's okay. They had a nice part and it will be live after. So it's okay. And you can also see it again on, on Facebook. My Facebook link, I will give you all in the channel. There's too many links, you know. I'm, I'm, the, I'm on all the groups and everywhere. So you cannot miss me. Uh, you cannot miss, uh, you cannot have any excuse, you know, not to keep in touch. Uh, fine, so let me come back. So I, I said that I was, I was starting to do this um, uh, karma yoga, helping people. And I was missing not having someone. I was not knowing where I'm going. Because suddenly I started to do something like more normal, like helping people. I always dreamt, uh, you know, had a dream to help people. Uh, I come from Eastern Europe, so in Eastern Europe we help people naturally. I mean, it's like our house is open, maybe too much. Sometimes I say, okay, my God, my neighbor came, you know. Some days we don't want because it's too much. But we are very open. That is the way of being. And uh, uh, I was missing that and somehow I was connecting inside. And my guru, 
by then, I mean, the teacher I had was more teacher. Um, uh, he was not answering my messages anymore. It was something crazy going on. I was thinking, oh my God, what is this? Uh, and it was, of course, his divine game as well. Life divine game because life is also life is divine. Life is the creator. Life is also guiding us. If you missed an opportunity somewhere, life will bring that again to you. If you didn't work on something. Okay, so uh, I started to think, okay, I don't know what to do. And uh, I come from a musician's family and singers. My father was a singer. He was going live on the national channel and I'm singing since my childhood. And I said, I know what I can do. I can start singing, but I want to learn now some Indian singing. And this is how I met a music teacher from India and I started to learn online. And then he came to Paris and um, coming to Paris, we opened together uh, um, an, another organization because in my charity organization, everyone liked Bollywood, everyone liked India. I said, it'll become a Bollywood, you know, organization. I wanted to uh, be international. So I opened another organization about uh, Indian culture. And in that organization, I started to learn about singing and still uh, I didn't reach the summit, you know, Indian classical music is it's another path. It's a path in which you have to practice so much. But I had some knowledge with this teacher and he said, you know, when you learn music, you also learn how to be. You have so many values. He said that his teachers, you know, and even his father when he when he sent him to music, he said, you know, I send you to learn music because these teachers know how to teach you more than music because we have to learn listening and, uh, and uh, yes, expressing and also the manners, the good manners. I saw yesterday a video about uh, uh, one of the girls in India in a school of music, you know, who is, speak, who is speaking about her song. She has so much humility. We see her bowing down to her parents, bowing down to her music gurus. And when she speaks about that, she speaks like we did something together. It's not like, you know, I'm a big artist. I go on my stage. I'm doing my concert. Look how nice I am. No, it's something in which you are surrendering. It's like the flute, you become the flute of Krishna, the mantras are singing through you. How many of you had this experience that Om Namo Narayanaya Mantra and whatever other, other bhajans are just singing through you? You do something else, suddenly you hear Om Namo Narayanaya. I don't have my Romanian friends here, my Romanian channel, we are meeting and we sing together. Om Namo Narayanaya, Om Namo Narayanaya. And I, I went to see them, I, I'm often busy, but I go to have some sessions with them just to be there. I tell you, this mantra is ringing in that way <laughs> the whole week. And we have a nice video of a child, you know, the child is not participating there, but his mother is in the group. And the child, like playing, is singing Om Namo Narayanaya. So imagine how he got that. And in Hindu tradition, we say, when you once heard the mantra, that mantra is in you. It's kind of you heard, you listen to God and God will save you. Maybe at the last moment of your, you know, your life, you will just hear Om and Om Namo Narayanaya and will directly go to that level of consciousness. And in the chapter 8 of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, at the last moment of your life, keep your mind on me, let go of everything, breathe slowly and sing Om. Because he says, among all the sounds, I am Om. So how precious is that? That the name of God is God himself that we are getting. And when we sing, so this is why I said, I don't know. I felt like betrayed by my guru. You know, it's crazy. My mind was saying, you see, your guru has said that he will always be there. Now he's not answering. So what I will do, we said we'll always be together. I don't believe anymore. I need to progress and I will do music. And I went to these music classes as I go to learn, you know, like notes. And I got so much for this music teacher. 
That's not a beautiful experience and how he taught me and how he himself has been taught in this parampara, this lineage of uh, music, you know, Indian music. And then still, you know, I, inside me, I was thinking, I have to meet my guru. I have to meet my guru, you know, and, and that was there. And 2010, I met another guru. Meanwhile, I did something, again, very funny. I remembered of Swami Vishwananda and I went on his website. And by then, 2000, uh, it was 2008 already, uh, we already had a Bhakti Marga website and some uh, MP3 recordings of Guruji satsangs were there. And I went and I just clicked on one and that recording was Guruji was shouting at someone, you know, saying, my God, you are an idiot. How many times I told you this? And I was like, what? He's speaking like this? This is crazy. And actually, I don't know how that was there. And actually, you know, Guruji is joking a lot. We have to know Guruji. When you just listen to his voice, it's not like you are seeing what is happening. It's out of context. And I said, oh, I, I have already felt that my first mentor, you know, teacher was hard. He's not answering how, how sad I feel. And now, look, I wanted to join this guru. And he just says that we are idiots. I will not join that guru. You know? And that was my second phase between which I was not ready <laughs> and again I was waiting to meet my guru but in a way that I wanted so you see we are like this we, we have something in our mind and if you want it or not you project on relationships on your work on people we want things to be like we want in our mind and sometimes we want to control situations and they are happening in other way and then we panic we are feeling bad and, and it's going on and on you know like a circle you see that mouse in a circle you know you you give a, a, a you know a, a toy to a mouse you know that wheel and he's going going round and round it's like oh my god he's not tired this is what we do <laughs> round and round and round and we are happy and we are sad and we are angry and and we want to control and we want to change and, and it's never we are never happy right only when we surrender and say I know one day I will die, maybe tomorrow, maybe in some hours, maybe, you know, I know everyone will die, I know nothing is permanent, I cannot hold to anything, I cannot control, and especially the guru, you cannot control the guru, <laughs> to be as you want, and that is also, you know, a drama sometimes for our mind, and Gorgi says, how many times, I just, I just catch some glimpses of his satsangs, and I'm, it's so funny, because he always says, yes, come out of dramas, see how beautiful you are, unique, Krishna is inside you, the Guru is in your heart, so you don't have to worry, but we want outside things, we are like, you know, so lost in the outside game, we don't see, you know, things coming and we don't see you know you always say yeah next time in that situation I'll be very calm I will surrender and when this situation comes again you know it's triggering something inside when I will see this person I will not get angry because I'm here to be loving but still it's not so easy right all the time we are getting trapped into something and then we spend some time and it's almost okay I'm tired I'll just forget this and and usually, you know, we say, okay, I will go to sleep. I'll forget all this drama. My mind is too agitated. If you have some techniques, you know, we can even by the end of this session, I can give you two, three things you can practice easily. Uh, like observing your breath, okay? Whenever, how we were doing, we had exams. We were so much tense. And someone maybe in the family say, okay, just breathe. Because the heart is beating, everything is going crazy. Just slow down and start breathing. Inhale, exhale, wherever you are, say it's not so bad, everything will pass, it's drama, you are playing dramas, and we have an actress here, she knows, <laughs> we, are, we are just playing dramas, and we are playing the drama of life, and, and we have to let go, and just, you know, just have some rest, and you will see how nice it is and don't want to control and just let go, let God carry you. At the beginning when I, uh, you know, I was in Bhakti Marga, 
um, I was like, what is Bhakti Marga? What is Bhakti? And Swami Vijay, by then, and if he sees my satsang, I just say hi, because I don't know where he is, but I, I just, you know, greet my, our appointed Swami of Belgium. Uh, he made a nice satsang saying, you know, Bhakti Marga, it's like the mother monkey carrying the baby. Wherever the mother is going, the baby is going. The baby doesn't make any effort to go anywhere. The baby is on the mother, holds the mother fully in full trust. And this is actually the best image of what is bhakti, this devotion. Letting go, going into love, feeling secured, trust the path and trust the, the guru and uh, love trust love love will awaken in you love will just come you just have have to let go of the mind you will drop in the heart you know <laughs> and and the, some there are some paths i don't know if you know they are doing meditation on let my mind come in my heart we were doing that whoever uh, learns in the meditation okay let i'm in my mind let me drop myself in my heart just see that even just thinking of that can help you so one is breathing, observing the breath, and second is slowing down your mind, you know, observe the thoughts and observe that you are going into your heart and you let go. And there is this nice story in French, the little prince who says, uh, you know, that we can see with our heart, right? And also say also in French that the heart has reason, reasons that our reason, <laughs> our mind cannot understand. And it's like this is two different ways of functioning. If you are too much in the heart, sometimes we are too loving. Maybe we are too naive. Maybe we are too kind. But it's better than being too much rigid because that kindness step by step i said if you are too kind as a mother at one moment it will be too much and you say okay my child is going crazy i have now to be strict and you find a way but if you are too much in the mind you know it's so difficult so difficult from the heart to the mind it's easier and our path is 40 centimeters you know we say always that it's from the mind to the heart this is the distance of our spiritual path and our mission, what is the mission of Swami Vishwananda? It's opening the hearts of men to bring them to just love. So precious, so beautiful, right? Yes, so, yeah, it's so precious, this path and how he is coming into our life. So, finally, <laughs> after all these struggles, I found a yogi as a master, as a guru, you know, and I went into Shaivai path because this is something I was knowing from my teenager years. I said that I started yoga and yoga was uh, given to humanity by Lord Krishna. And I said that today I will also give you a little bit, you know, an understanding of Guru Gita. Uh, I see that time is flying, so we will not have time to cover anything, but just see Lord Krishna is speaking to his uh, consort Parvati and is teaching her many things and she's asking questions. This is Guru Gita, you know, this is a part of Skanda Purana, that is the Shaiva text and in this text Shiva is talking to Parvati and it's clarifying things about the Guru. And it's so beautiful. Each verse is a pearl. And to understand that, I recommend you that book to understand what is the Guru. It's called Guru Gita. And you find it on Bhakti Shop. I don't have the link here, but I will give you on the groups. Uh, because it's so beautiful. He speaks about how are the feet of the Guru. The feet of the gurus are so precious, precious uh, are so precious, that hold the uh, energy of all the main rivers of India, the Tirthas, and the water from the feet of the guru. It's a nectar. Whoever takes even a drop of that can get, you know, um, his, you know, the whole system transformed. 
And in our ashram, we were having Guruji's food. Guruji was blessing his food, was taking a little bit, and he was putting all the remainings outside for everyone to eat. So until 2, 3 in the morning, we were there eating, waiting for Guruji's food and needing something. Like I can tell you how much that prasad has moved things and has clarified things in all of us. Even a drop of that food is so precious. And when we meet Guruji, we get everything from him. If he has his handkerchief, whatever tissue, we are getting everything. And it smells, it smells like roses, you know, that is his own subtle perfume. And if he goes into place and does a program, if you can catch a hair of the saint, you know, the Lord, we are getting that. So we, we are kind of, you know, this bhakti, this devotion, especially when you understand what is the greatness of the person you have in front of you, whatever thing it's giving to you, it's really moving everything. And he's giving us darshans now, which is very precious. Before many people could not get darshans, there was a long queue at the ashram, and the ashram was not having many beds for everyone to sleep. Now Guruji is available online to look at every one of us directly, and this energy works as the physical one. Do not think that you don't receive what you have to receive. It is same. It's good to meet him personally, and I hope the ashram will open but we have to wait a little bit to see how the world is going just to tell you what you will find in this book and i will put you whatever i'm talking about i will put you this lines of guru gita in the group as well so i don't take now your attention with other sanskrit verses alone it is too much it's late in some countries it's very late you know like mauritius uh, yeah it's very late there india and um, yeah so i will not take now your time with sanskrit even if, yes, we don't have limits, let's uh, learn Sanskrit during the night. <laughs> you know, let's be crazy, <laughs> do something <laughs> crazy today. For some people, they are here since morning, so it's amazing. Thank you. Um, so, yes, I was, you know, um, studying this because I studied Shaivite and uh, Path, and we were talking about Shiva as being the one who um, is at the origin of yoga, the whole yoga system. And the uh, dance also, there is a Shiva Nataraja who is dancing beautifully. That is, even if Krishna also has his dance and both of them met and danced together. We have so many stories of, of both of them, you know, sharing nice moments. That is another part. Uh, and I went to study yoga in India and I spent five years in a very, very traditional but beautiful lineage uh, for Shiva is and I learned a lot of things and beyond my understanding I had amazing experiences but you see I worked on my body I worked on my system but still I was not having you know 100% devotion for my guru and for any of my gurus before Guruji I didn't feel I'm at home you see <laughs> so we always say home is where heart is your heart is there but still sometimes you don't feel it's, you are fully home and i was thinking my god look at these devotees how is it for them they are committed fully i cannot commit fully what's wrong with me i was you know at some point uh, i had some moments uh, in which i didn't understand what's wrong with me why i'm like meeting so many uh, people on the path studying so many things and I don't reach home. I was really feeling that something is not complete in me. And some days I was thinking, oh my God, look, I speak several languages. I learned so many things, but look at the baker, you know, the bakery, this bakery, this person wakes up at six, does only bread, how happy he is. And I'm here, should I dance? Should I teach, teach dancing? Should I follow this? I mean, it was crazy, you know, I really felt I was not fully committed and at that moment Guruji came to Paris 2014 and I was Swamini I mean it was another initiation I was in Orange but I was not having full initiation as a Swamini my husband died in 2013 and immediately after I really felt that my life is for others and I want to serve and I'm not ready to marry again and uh, you know my son um, 
now he's you know he's 22 years old uh, and by then also I was very supported by the family I could continue my path and I went to India get my initiation in I was in orange it was uh, you know the system was different than ours in our system we are in orange when we take full vows okay but in other you have different traditions in which you have different um, levels and at that moment uh, you know uh, I was um, I was in orange but not fully and I had to take another color when I was fully uh, dedicated there uh, I had to take the full vows um, and meanwhile Guruji comes to Paris and gives a satsang uh, and darshan and uh, my guru by then was uh, in other part of India is the first time he did a pilgrimage in another city it was like you know far he was not online because he used to communicate online and I was feeling um, that actually uh, I have to see myself what to do I kept receiving the flyers of the darshan you know Gurti I was thinking oh this guru I wanted to meet him <laughs> look that he's coming to Paris no but I cannot go because it's not my guru I cannot go and take darshans from other guru I have to see in which way I go to meet him okay and these flyers kept coming it was so funny uh, and wherever I was going in Paris by then, I was receiving, you know, I went to buy my food, organic food, and in the shop I found the flyer. I went in another center, the flyer was there. Uh, I met some friends, said, oh, look, a nice event, go there. I went on the internet, I received the message. I can tell you, since the moment I saw that page of Guruji uh, on MySpace, I kept receiving news where Guruji was. So I was, I got in touch with him and this is the, the greatness of a guru who already chose you. You don't know, but he knows and that energy, subtle energy is with you. And I didn't subscribe anywhere. It was not a full website where you put, you know, like today, yes, newsletter. No, I just saw that page. I didn't subscribe anywhere. From that moment, I was receiving in my email. I don't know where they found my email address, his devotees, because they were doing communication, of course. So that ear communication when I met him was amazing. But even before, I was like, oh, look, the guru I wanted to meet is in Switzerland. Is not far from me <laughs> oh look he's doing something there but I was always busy because I was so committed in with other things I was doing music I had to do concerts I was traveling I had a charity organization it became very big and I never had time and I was not feeling it you know when it's not the right moment it's like the doors are closed and you, you cannot help it you have to wait for the guru to open the door for you and see you and welcome you fully and meanwhile I was I came back from India I was in Orange I opened a small temple in Paris in Indian area uh, my guru by then was amazing I will make other satsangs about him about all my teachers were really I had the chance to meet amazing beings have been blessed from all directions but still you know when I met Guruji because finally I went to meet him and I had so many funny things we don't have time but I will tell you that because it's already 7.52 uh, how funny it was that he was just there you know and um, I asked inside myself okay in which way I have to go to meet him if really this is what I have to do and I understood I have to meet him as a representative of my guru who is going to you know meet another guru and this is what I did. I bought a big garland and I said, I will go and meet him, uh, introducing myself. And there was another Swami with me. We were two uh, living together and working together. And we went to see Guruji and we sat in front and uh, he saw us immediately. He finished his satsang. So his satsang was different than whatever I heard before. And when I heard, you just have to love peace and love and I said it's too simple how many books I read and how many concepts of Sanskrit I know how 
we are only just love. This is too simple. And Guruji has a way to give satsang sometimes. It's so sweet and simple, you know. And you are there thinking he will reveal this and that. And he's just there into a loving space. And for our mind, it's crazy. And sometimes he makes a lot of gains. He speaks English perfectly. Then he makes a lot of mistakes. Then he continues to make the same mistakes. And you are there. Oh, he is from Mauritius. He should speak French perfectly. And he speaks French perfectly. You say, oh my God, I always saw he doesn't remember some words. And then again, I don't remember. You and you, how are you saying? Until you understand that he tries to wake up people around who are just not listening. And, and you see, he makes so many games. But your mind goes like, oh, come on. He's from Mauritius. He doesn't speak English properly. He doesn't speak French properly. What does he speak properly? There is something which, you know, and you are the teacher there, you know, like having, because French is not my mother tongue. So I studied French. English is not my mother tongue. I studied English in laboratories with pronunciation. Of course, I, I stopped before because I met my guru. So I stopped, you know, before doing PhD and other stuff. But I was, yeah, I wanted to uh, study Shakespeare and make research on him and other things. Um, but yes, I mean, how simple it is and our mind doesn't understand it's so simple. It cannot be so simple. We have been searching for that here and there and everywhere. And he just said, it's so simple. Just love, just surrender. And then you see people crying around and say, wow, it's amazing. And he said, so he saw us, he finished his sad song and I was like, wow, it's nice. He's not a... Yeah, he's a nice guru. It's not the same that I was studying until now, but still it's like simple and, and you know. And he saw us because we have been put in front, being in orange, and he called me and I made a sign towards another Swamini saying, listen, I will call you with a garland because now I have to go and introduce myself first. And I was thinking, I have to introduce myself in a way that he understands he cannot catch me. You know something? I was feeling something was going on and Guruji is very beautiful, right? And you are there thinking, I'm a Shiva warrior. I'm coming from my Guru. No one can catch me. No one. And I have to introduce myself first because it is too sweet, all this, too flowery. Where are we going? <laughs> so my mind was going crazy. And I went to him and he was so simple, full of love. You know, I went in front of him and... He said, Mataji, uh, where are you coming from? And uh, are you from France? And he was just looking at me straight. And you know, his eyes were full of love. And in that minute, you know, there were 600 people waiting for the darshan. <laughs> and I went to see him. And it was not long, but I felt he was keeping me for a long time. And I was thinking, oh my God, everyone is looking at me. Maybe some devotees from our guru are there. They are looking at me. I'm here in front of him. And actually it was not too long, but there was some, that instant of eternity, you know, and, and full loving, you know, presence. And in that moment, I found my, my strength and said, actually, I'm coming from this guru. And, <laughs> and I came because, yeah, I came to say hello from his side. And then I made a sign. Uh, the other Swamini came and I put a big garland on him and he was so happy, you know. And immediately after, he put a garland on Mahavatar Babaji. And he said, oh, my God, you come from your guru. I know your guru. How is your guru? And I was thinking, come on, he's not loving my guru more than me. I was thinking, I love my guru the best. He was so loving. He is an incarnation of love, fully. And now I was like, wow, now he seems very nice because he loves my guru. I love my guru. He's a nice person. You know, I don't have to have any problem. I said, please wait. I want to send a message to your guru. I said, okay, if it's for my guru, of course, I will wait. And I went back to my, my seat and then the darshan started and I was there. And, you know, before meeting even my first teacher, I used to go like Amma was giving darshans and I was going with my child, you know, to see her darshans. And I know this atmosphere of having songs and being there. And I was thinking, wow, it's a little bit like Amma's darshan, you know, like this spiritual girl's darshan. There's some music is there. We start feeling nice. Our heart is opening. So I didn't see the darshan, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, passing. It is like 
suddenly it was finished and you know 600 people how long is that i didn't see it i don't know i just suddenly i saw it's finished i remembered he has to give me some message and i went to him and he started speaking french saying i want you to send my greetings to your guru really from all my heart say that i'm sending him greetings and then he just left and i was like what i spent just all this time to hear greetings i was thinking it's a big message <laughs> Still, it was going on, you know. I was not ready yet to surrender. He was knowing I have to come there to move from Shiva to Krishna, from that, you know, warrior I was to something more loving. But I was not knowing at the time, right? And of course, you have a guru. You cannot just say, okay, I'm here, just take me. No, because I'm following Indian tradition. Indian tradition is, you know, it's a commitment as well. And anywhere... You know, you go to school, you commit to your school. You cannot just leave school, oh, goodbye, I'm going. The teachers will ask, the director will ask. They will send, you know, <laughs> they will send a note at home. I'm receiving on my phone. Sophia has been absent today. I don't know who is who is Sophia, but every day I'm receiving a message from, they, they, it is a wrong number and I said it's a wrong number. But still, you know, they are sending message. You cannot just leave like this anywhere, right? And then I came home. And I was a devotee of Shiva and I had Shiva everywhere. I came to my house that night and I was feeling Jesus is alive. You know, <laughs> I was having my son uh, has been a Hindu with me because I brought him to India in my first years. And when he was eight, he said, Mom, I don't want all this Hindu deities. Can we, can we just love Jesus? I, do we have a Bible? I said, yes, we love Jesus. Here is the Bible do whatever you want. So I was having Jesus and Mary and Saint Anthony and all the saints. Immediately you were, you know, coming uh, in, in my house. On the right, I had Jesus first. As I said, if someone is coming, they should not know that I'm so crazy into Hinduism with all my <laughs> Murtis. And everything was kept aside because my mother-in-law said that I'm completely crazy and I will maybe bring everyone to India and maybe live there forever. So I was, you know, taking care. She was such a loving person and and I was had a nice relationship, but she was scared that where I'm going because it's so traditional as I was following. It's not like today, you know, I explained today how nicely it's Hinduism given to us by Guruji, saying that it's just love, it's all about love. Yes, then we commit to something. We dress in a particular way when we do pujas because we are Hindus when we are initiated. But it's nothing like being so strict because this is how Western world is and we are going step by step. Yes, if you go deeper into it, you will take some commitments because you represent someone and something and a mission and you cannot do whatever. But it's never like, uh, you know, very, very hard and strong and dogmatic. It's very open, open-minded, open-hearted. That is the main thing. So you see, first I was feeling, oh my God, Jesus is alive, Mother Mary, what happens in my house? And I went into my temple because you all had like a home temple. I had a temple in Paris. I had a small temple at home. I had a small temple in Romania. I was making temples everywhere. That was my temple era. And I went to my temple and I was not feeling Shiva anymore as before. And I was feeling Krishna all over. And I was thinking, oh my God, I don't understand. I said, I think I spent too much time with this, uh, you know, going to this satsang and darshan. Um, it is, I think I have to sleep and tomorrow I will see clearly. <laughs> and I went to sleep. And next day it was a big procession in Paris. We have the Radha Krishna procession with other movements. We had Hare Krishna people and everyone, all the spiritual movements came out. And I also came out with my guru at that time and the panel, this is my guru and I will not let go of my guru. And I said, wow, guys, I took everyone for our group, come with me. We have to still continue to do our work because now this Krishna vibe is coming. And he said, no, what is that? And look, I'm reaching the procession and I'm waiting for other Swamini who parked her car. Because, you know, Paris is not so easy to just leave your car somewhere. I was waiting for her. And suddenly I saw a devotee of Swami Vishwananda that I met the previous night. And this devotee says, look, Guruji is there. And then Swami Vishwananda is just waving at me. And I said, oh my God, again here, you know. What I will do today? And he comes to me. The 
directly. And it was so sweet how he was respecting me. For me, I was, I was, you know, an expansion of my guru. And he was having such a respect for my guru. Even he wrote a letter after, because I will tell you after, you know, I will not have time to tell you the whole six years. I will tell you quickly, but so many things happen. I will not have time to give you all today. And um, how nicely, you know, uh, he just knew that this had to happen. And my guru also, at that time, he understood. They talked together, they met together, you know, we went to Gumba Mela, we met him. He was a little bit different with me. He just, you know, showed me that he's not my guru anymore and that he just... You know, the gurus are also doing their divine games. One guru sends it to other guru. How many devotees of Satya Sai Baba we have? I meet people from Nitananda Mai. I have people, you know, in my groups from Ama. Uh, and even people who are following their guru, but are followers in our um, mission. And at that evening, when the darshan was there, I met all the people I had in my groups in France. I was in charge of France. I was a Mahant of Paris by then, that is a spiritual title, and I had under my supervision people from the whole, whole France. But still, now I'm saying, because maybe some of my old uh, brothers and sisters will see that, yes, I was not fully committed. And then Kuruji comes, and you see when you lost an opportunity to be fully somewhere, because this is how our heart is. Our heart is there, is not there. But if you were going somewhere, just see if it's the place where you have to be and commit yourself fully. It will bring you so much back, to give you so much back, step by step. And, and if you can't, just write a message in front of Guruji's feet. You know, we used to do this on a paper. Guruji, please, your parashakti, your energy beyond your energy, your presence beyond your physical presence, please attend my message. I have this obstacle. I have this problem. Please help me to surrender. You will see he will help you. And another experience I had, so during the whole procession, he was there. I talked to him. I said, again, I reminded, I'm from another guru. Can we do maybe something together? And he said, yes, invite your guru to, to my ashram first. It was so sweet, you know. I was wor working on a project to bring my guru to France and to make a big ashram. He said, no, invite him to my place first. He is my friend. He knows him since 10 years, you know, more than 10 years now. It was 10 years at that time. And he said, no, invite him to my place first. And... Uh, and let's do something together. It's so beautiful, you know. And he could totally respected my choice. And he has been waiting for me. And I took more than one year to finally decide. So this was 2014. The whole year I was just trying to feel. And uh, step by step I was feeling I cannot commit fully where I was. And that I had to be sincere with myself. I wrote a letter saying I'm joining the movement of Swami Vishwananda. So it's like someone was asking, can we just live like this from a commitment of devotee, of Brahmachari? No, some things have karmic consequences when we are committing. Only the Guru knows how much we are, we are um, hold by that. And only he can release us. If we didn't commit fully, which for some things that even the Guru knows that that will you know, be like a bad karma for us that will, will be there for us even in other lives and whatever we do, we always have to respect, you know, commit in something. If you do a service, do it fully. If you can't do it, just, you know, go nicely, send a discuse letter, but always do things in a complete way so it's you are not feeling guilty, you are feeling fine, and give yourself fully if you can. And if you can't, Ask your Guru why, surrender to his feet, be with him. We are going through processes, all of us. It's not that we are Swamis, that we don't have things. We have maybe more than anyone. We don't tell you because you will get scared. This because we put that aside. We have to attend. But we have big things happening. Guru says, I will tell you that moment this and he's not there. And then again, you don't have news and someone. But we have to trust whatever happens. And for you, it will be the same. Some people have received like a promise for Guru, from Guruji that he will come to their house and he came to their house after 20 years and imagine how much that person has been waiting for him and say oh my god it's crazy but he knows why he's doing that why you have to go to this waiting to increase that okay I almost finished Marilyn no problem you have to to go we will all now breathe so I will just tell you what to do wherever you are now if you are leaving Marilyn I'm talking to Marilyn 
uh, just breathe inhale exhale observe your breath and be happy and keep in touch and come on the group and uh, you can follow me all over i'm on whatsapp i can give you my email wait i give you my email to everyone uh, i will give you my personal email so this if you want to write something for you for others you need any help just contact me okay and my number you find me on whatsapp on telegram depends on what you use six zero three eighty eighty one twenty two yes uh, and same i will do on facebook whoever is watching this video now later i will give you all don't worry it will be same okay so take all this i mean after you can i will uh, this i will not disconnect immediately so you have time to see the chat okay so if you don't didn't uh, copy something here okay so you see it's so precious to be there and he is holding your heart he will he will remind you if you let him do he will come in your dreams you know someone came in a group she was not there the whole year we do some practice and i said how come you're coming now and she said i had a dream he just came to me and i understood i have to come for other people they are murti you know we'll we'll just call them he can do all the things he wants if he doesn't do it means maybe you don't need if you don't have a ring many people say oh i didn't have a ring i may be less special than others no you are not it's just that maybe you don't need it the ring is a connection many people need miracles many people need big miracles to trust and i didn't finish the story with my brother but because you find that also on youtube is that when he was at hospital I wrote to Guruji, Guruji, I know he is in a hospital, I cannot reach him, I don't have news, please take care of him. And then I slept. And my brother, who was not at all in Bhakti Marga, who was like, I don't want to come to the Christmas, vegetarian Christmas, I don't want, to, you know, I don't have alcohol, dance, friends, you know, to be boring. And I talked to him just be before this happened. And, and he came uh, back next day home and he said look what happened to me i said what what happened your phone was not working i said listen i can tell you suddenly i felt a feeling of peace and i said i'm sure my sister wrote to her guru about me he just slept and he had an amazing dream guruji came to him during the night you will see this i seen one of my stories how guruji came and showed him exactly like Bhagavad Gita chapter 11, my brother who is a Christian, who doesn't know anything of Bhagavad Gita, Sriman Narayana, the Supreme, had this vision in his dream. In, you know, in a moment in which he was not thinking of Guruji as being the Supreme to save him, he said, my, my sister will do something tomorrow, we'll see, it's fine. But he surrendered that moment saying, oh, I saw that guy because he got to Darshan's before, he came with me, I was bringing him everywhere. And he felt something loving, even my mother came and at the moment of the death, you know, my mother saw Guruji once. At the moment of her death, you know, Guruji was present. He sent a message to me saying, tell your mother that I'm there. He had more love and attention for my mother than from, for me and I was like, oh my God, I need support now. He was knowing I have to surrender to accept that my mother is dying, that that is my process, okay? Everyone, we have to accept, we don't have choice. We have to go through that. That is, in, that, that is the thing of which we are most sure, that death will come and Guruji repeats. So do not worry, if you met Guruji in your life, just hold your mind on him. If you can have a priest, have it. If you don't have, no problem. Hold the mantra, hold Guruji's image, you will be saved. And my mother died on Narasimha Chaturthi day. I was not even knowing she's linked to Narasimha. She was having some Narasimha energy. Some we had some fights. You know how we are after how much we regret that we had some fights. And she, you know, she died on that day. She just passed. And I felt the moment when she left. And Guruji said how blessed was she that she left on that day. So if you just saw him, she just had one darshan 
and a dream of Guruji because she was worried about me. She was Christian as well. Okay, I said, listen, we have Orthodox religion. Don't worry because she was Orthodox. Come to the ashram. You will see Jesus. <laughs> and we had, we had darshan and I was doing initiations. My mother was, what are you doing? And I said, I will have my Swami initiation. I said, oh my God, you just cheated on me. I was thinking you come back to Christian, Christian religions. You said that you were, you were Swami, you know, and yeah, I mean, we have Jesus, we love Jesus, he's there, we worship all the saints, we like that. But still, my path was Hinduism. And then she said, okay, let me see, and she had a dream, and it's good, you were saying, just calm down, don't worry, I will take care. And all the time she was telling me, whenever I said, I'm going to Dasham, yes, go, he needs us, mom, he needs everyone, I'm not going to marry him. But she was talking like, she understood, I have to be there. It was so sweet, you know, I had to stop her. Um, so yes, this is it, a connection between our soul and the Supreme, between Atma, that is our soul, and Paramatma. And yes, it's like communion, like an inner marriage, it is a spiritual kind of you know, of link, but that is helping us so much, you know, so just trust it, be into that, I'm just seeing if I told you everything, so you don't go too much, oh my god, already 14 minutes, you see how time is flying, I will give you some time for questions and answers, and we stop here today, and let's see when we meet again, I'm in quarantine here, maybe I can give you other satsangs, uh, keep in touch, so if you have some questions, just put it now, if you want to talk, you can open your mic and tell me something, no worries. Okay, so you are free. And now I'm closing on my side on Facebook, everyone. Thank you so much for following this. And I will make a question and answer session maybe these days too on Facebook. Have a nice evening.